The recent legal battle between WhatsApp owned by Meta and the government of India has sparked a significant debate over privacy, encryption and governmental regulation of social media platforms. Conflict which escalated in the Delhi High Courts revolves around new regulations imposed on social media companies by the Indian government and WhatsApp's response to these regulations. In the latest development, WhatsApp has told the court that it would exit India if told to break the end-to-end -end encryption. Now, what is this end-to-end -end encryption? End-to-end -end encryption is a security feature implemented by WhatsApp to ensure the privacy and confidentiality of user messages. Essentially, this encryption method ensures that only the sender and intended recipient can read the messages, making it virtually impossible for anyone else including WhatsApp itself so it claims to intercept or decipher the content. When a message is sent it is encrypted on the sender's device and can only be decrypted by the recipient's device using unique cryptographic keys. This means that even if the message travels through WhatsApp servers it remains encrypted and inaccessible to anyone other than the sender and the recipient. End-to-end -end encryption is regarded as a crucial privacy feature providing users with a high level of security and protection against unauthorized access to their communication. The government of India has raised concerns about WhatsApp and Facebook's practice of monetizing user data while claiming to protect users' privacy. Now, the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology has argued that this practice violates users' fundamental rights to privacy. Additionally, the government asserts that WhatsApp's refusal to provide access to dispute resolution mechanisms within the country further infringes upon user rights. Fundamental rights and dispute resolution According to the Indian government, WhatsApp's actions have impeded users' access to dispute resolution mechanisms within the country, thus violating their fundamental rights. The ministry has stressed the importance of implementing the IT rules of 2021 to enable law enforcement agencies to track down fake messages that could potentially incite societal unrest. Now, when it comes to the accountability of social media platforms, well, yes, the government asserts that social media platforms, including WhatsApp and Facebook, must be accountable to both users and the law of the country in which they operate. It argues that no entity should be allowed to infringe upon the fundamental rights guaranteed by the Indian constitution. Moreover, the ministry defended the IT rules stating that they align with globally accepted norms regarding the responsibilities of intermediaries in the digital sphere. WhatsApp's stance on end-to-end -end encryption is at the core of its conflict with the Indian government. The platform has stressed the importance of encryption for safeguarding user privacy and has threatened to leave India if compelled to breach message encryption. WhatsApp contends that the end-to-end -end encryption is crucial for ensuring user privacy and cannot be compromised. Government's perspective on traceability, the Indian government argues that the traceability of message originators is essential for combating harmful content and upholding online safety standards. It says that social media platforms have a responsibility to assist in identifying individuals who spread misinformation or incite violence. The government's demand for traceability is aimed at enhancing accountability and preventing the misuse of social media platforms. Learning from other jurisdictions is also important. Looking at other countries, we can see a similar struggle between governments and technology companies regarding data and privacy and security. While some nations have implemented stricter regulations on social media platforms, others have opted for a more nuanced approach that upholds both individual privacy and national security interests. The government, social media platforms and civil society organizations need to work together to develop solutions that effectively address the spread of misinformation and hate speech while safeguarding the fundamental right to privacy.